I, we are made to build. And unless the Lord builds the house, what's going to happen to our house? Oh, it's not good. So how many of you like building something, you start building something, and to find out at the end that you did it wrong? Uh, it happens to me all the time, like especially when I fix something, like some electronics or something like this. At the end, I got these parts still in my hand. Where are these parts coming from? They're supposed to be inside, not in my hand. Or if you are uh, cooking something and at the end it's not rising or something, you have to destroy it and start all over again. And whatever you do, you must begin correctly. Otherwise, you will have to start it all over again, and it would be a mess. And it's the same for the Christian life. And we want to look at Psalm 127 this morning, verse 1 to 5. The text is here. We may read it, and we will stay to that, ver to that uh, psalm the whole morning. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects the city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest to his loved ones. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hands. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. He will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. Amen. What a blessing to know that God is interested in building our lives, our home, and, he's, and we need to recognize that. There's a saying that says, little is much if God is in it. Okay, can you say that with me? Little is much if God is in it. But the opposite is also true. Much is nothing if God is not in it. It's not going to give satisfaction. And that's what this psalm is all about. Unless our activity are ordered and directed by the Lord, there will be a waste at the end. It will not give the, the, the right results. Men and women, but I'm saying men in a general term, man is a builder because we have inherited uh, the qualities of God, like the, the, the characters of God. God is a creator, so we are builders. We have this creativity uh, in, in us. That's part of our, uh, who we are. Uh, we build house, boats, computers, airplanes, televisions, hospitals, industries, roads, satellite, cars, and much, much more. It is in our nature to build. Man is made at the image of God. You know, we have great builders here in the church. Um, Brother Mike Gabay is an engineer. Uh, Brother Andreas uh, always uh, invent uh, new, new things. When we go to our thing, like last time he had uh, uh, made a, a pipe uh, to shoot birds and, and all of this uh, because he learned it on Discovery Channel. Um, when we need help at church, uh, Brother Steve, uh, Brother Kim, they are always bringing their toolkit and they are helping us, you know, to fix. Brother Nomer installed our Wi-Fi on the third floor. When we remodel the second floor, and we were working on the fourth floor to organize it as a church. You remember how Jin Fu and Robert were ingenious in setting up the, the, the projectors and, and, the, and the screen there. Uh, Tom is a sound engineer, and we can go on and on and on the list. And uh, we have so many builders here, or designers, uh, people who are creative with their gifts. And this Psalms here is a very important Psalms, and it's so meaningful to all of us this morning. Morning. You know why? Because it addresses the most important human concerns. Think about it for a while. It talks about our house or our accomplishments, what you build throughout your life. This is our concerns, our house, our life, our livelihood, our security if the Lord doesn't protect or keep 
then we, the, the sentries are there in vain. Or security, or personal security, or protection. Or general employment. We will wake up in the morning, we work from early morning to late at night. We experience stress and pressure from work. And then our family. Everything's there. What are you constantly concerned about? What's on your mind every day? What do you talk about when you are with your friends? What's your goal in life? Or what influences what your goal will be in your life? What worry you every day? It's all here. It's all here. Your house, your security, your protection, your money, your livelihood, your wealth, and your families. It's all here. And God has a message for us this morning because as parents, we all share that in common. You go to any culture, remember years ago, I went to, the, to China so many times in my early years. He as a missionary was on the train and people were asking me, what country are you from? I'm from Canada. Oh, Canada, how, how good, yeah, how good, yeah. It's a good country. And then sometimes, I think through kind of a false humility, they would say, Zhongguo, Mo, Bu Hao, Bu Hao, Janada Hao. I says, no, 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 not like that. I says, it's the same. It's the same. Because you and me have the same worries. We have the same concerns. We have the same goals. You want your children to be happy, to live in peace. You want your children to have success. I want my children. So what's the difference between you and between me? It's the same thing. So what is involved here in this Psalms, it, it goes beyond any borders. It is true for every single family, clans, tribes, societies, generation, and the modern society and the most uh, background places of the world, this is true. In the mountain of Pakistan, when they have super floods coming and everything gets destroyed, and in other place of Iran or other places when they have earthquakes or anything, or any place where they are struck with uh, uh, disasters of all sorts, uh, typhoon or whatever, this is what worries us. This is what is on our heart. This is why we go to work every day. This is why most of us in this room are here in Hong Kong today. Think about it. Why are you here? To improve on any of these things. What do you worry about? You worry on these things. What do you talk on the phone when you SMS or Skype with your loved one or Viper and, and, uh, every day at night? You, you talk about these things. Is that right? So God has something for you this morning. He is talking to all of us this morning. Amen? God is concerned for the very same thing that you are concerned with uh, this morning. Hallelujah. That's good to know that. And in this psalm, forces each one of us to recognize that there is one who is in control. There is one who is in control of all these areas. And you and I, we need to learn to rely upon him for these areas of concerns that we have, that we are worrying about every day. In verse 1, there are two ways to build a house. Huh? Two ways. You can build, go ahead with your own plans, your own skill, your own financial resources. You can go ahead and, and build. And then at the end, then, oh God, bless. Okay? You, you don't bring God in. All along, you make your own choice. You go independently. You make your own plans. And at the end, oh God, bless what I just have done. There's one way to, to, uh, to, to build. Another way, probably better, you start with God. Or you let God start the project. You let God in prayer, through his inspiration, through his guidance, start the old things and guide you all along. And then throughout, you seek the Lord and you pray. For God's concerns, for God's glory, you, you do something with God in mind when you start. That's a better way. And uh, we all need to realize also that there is a great level of excitement. Think for a moment with me. When you see God working through your situations, coming through in His amazing ways, 
wondering like how you are going to get through this this stage how you are going to pay your bill at the end of the month how are you going to send your children to school and all of this and then suddenly god divinely surprise you with his blessing how exciting it is i remember when my children were young here in hong kong i was very poor I did not have an organization. I did not receive a salary and I didn't have an organization. When our missionary friends used to go to the restaurants after church, we would be going home because we didn't have money to go to the restaurants. We didn't take any taxis. We could just barely pay the rent. Sometimes we were a bit late, a few days. But God was with us. We came here to answer God's call and God was always faithful. We didn't have many times we were wondering how is it going to come at the end of the month. But the worst time came when it was time for us to send our children to two of our children to international school. This was impossible because we didn't have zero money. <laughs> And uh, we, we just had enough for the, the basic budget, not for a school. And you know the, co the cost of international school in Hong Kong. It was impossible. But I cannot go into the details of that. But how God blessed our family in this area and surprised us was amazing. And today I still, I, I still shed tears. And I, sometimes I remind my children about it. Like one day I sat with my children in the living room and we says, listen, we have to pray because you know dad cannot provide. I don't have this money. So unless God does a miracle, we, I cannot send you to, to the school. I, I just can't. It's impossible. So we prayed. And then we went to visit a few schools. And it, no, it didn't work. It's too expensive, no subvention or anything, no financial assistance or whatever. So we came home. Sorry to report that it's not working. So it says, oh, but anyway, let's pray again. We prayed again. The second time we prayed, that weekend, there was a walk for Jesus. You know, at that time, instead of a global outreach day, it was a march for Jesus and Lighthouse participated. And one of my daughter was uh, w walking along with a young lady from the youth group. And his dad was the new, the, the principal, a new, arrived in Hong Kong, the principal of a brand new school, CAIS, just got established. And they were looking for Christian families. To, to, you know, to, to help bring a Christian influence in the school. Anyway, to make a short story, they let us pay almost nothing to, to get our children. And, and they graduated from this school with a Canadian curriculum degree, uh, with a Christian uh, school that was very committed to the Lord. So what else could we ask better? And we didn't have money. And then the, 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 the funny part with that, I, I want to tell that story because it's, it's an important story for me. When we met with the principal, the principal says, oh, you are a missionary and we really want to have Christian influence in our school, so we will give you 50% discount. I says, oh, thank you so much, 50% discount. It's great, but I don't have it. <laughs> I have zero percent. I don't have 50 percent. So thank you very much. So he said, okay, when you go home, he says, could you send me a fax? Uh, at that time, it was not email even. It was a fax. And he says, of your budget, how much income you have, and how much you think you can afford. Because it, this is out of my hand. I need to present it to the administration committee. Because I am allowed to give 50% to missionaries and pastors, but beyond that, I don't have the authority. So I did that. And by faith, okay, be, be, be ready for that. <laughs> by faith, because I didn't have it. <laughs> for two children, we gave, we offered 2,000 Hong Kong dollars in the international school in Hong Kong uh, uh, for, for a month for a month. 2,000 Hong Kong dollars a month. For two children, not for one. 
And you know it costs at the time 5,000 for one or 6,000 or something like that, almost 5,000 for one besides all the fees. That was by faith, 2000. I didn't have it. I still didn't have it. <laughs> that very week, I received two letters from people that I have taken to travel in China that I, as a missionary, I took them to see some uh, underground church. When they went back home, the Holy Spirit told them in prayer to support our family. And at the same time when I committed by faith 2000, which I didn't have, <laughs> the Lord told them, you will give each one of you a certain amount for one year to this family. They wrote to me and they told me that. And the amount, guess what it is? 2000 a month. <laughs> to be, that, that's, this, is, this is exciting, isn't it? I was not richer. I didn't have much more money in my pocket. I didn't have less. But I saw God. And I rejoice about what God can do. And this is one story in my life of what I have seen God do with my children and our life and everything since the day that we answered God's call. But what I'm saying is that this psalm here and God's concern is true. It's true to you as it is to me. Amen? Hallelujah. God is so good. The second area is in the area of security. You can... You know, you, you have young children, and the children, they want to go to the street, and, and you know, it can do a lot of things, can go on this bicycle and fall, and, you know, accidents are prone to happen to children, you know. Uh, if you have children, you know that. <laughs> You've been to the hospital room because your child just jumped down the bed and hit his head on the cabinet or something. There's all sorts of things that happen. You cannot protect yourself. You cannot protect your children perfectly out of your own system of protection or whatever. You can do anything. Or ordinary precautions are not enough to keep us safe. You, 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 you can hurt yourself in your house. You can fall down your bed and break an arm or something. You can be, you know, you know what I mean. Any sorts of danger, any sorts of, you know, many times an accident is a stupid accident. It's not something that was really dangerous because in, when, when you are in a dangerous zone, normally you're aware of the danger and you are careful about, be careful where you step and where you hold on to this one and all this. You, you are careful. But when everything is safe, you just... Uh, <laughs> You know, oh, I didn't see the, 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 the step over here, you know, and that's when the, uh, the accident uh, happened. So if God is not going to protect you, uh, there's nothing that can protect you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. You know, Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 7 to 9, I tell you the truth, I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. Where is Jesus when the sheep are in the pen? He's at the gate. If someone wants to attack the sheep, who, who do they have to meet first? They have to meet Jesus. Because when you sleep in the pen... Jesus is guarding the door. He is the gate. Actually, you have to walk over my body. And, and the, Jesus' case is, is, you know, we have an expression, you have to walk over my dead body. But with Jesus, you cannot walk over his dead body because he is risen from the Lord. So you have to walk over his living body. And uh, yeah, you will be in trouble. Ha, hallelujah. Praise God. And then on verse second, so the second verse, it's about all of you are workaholic. Or, or that work always and stress and, or, and, and all of this. Very encouraging to you. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. And that is so much Hong Kong here. Huh? Well, no, that's true. Hong Kong is not so early in the morning. It's more like a little bit later, but it's late at night. Amen. Anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest for his loved one. 
And the good news, uh, the good news Bible says, for the Lord provides for those he loves while they are asleep. And that, that is uh, something very, very good, this, this part. The point is this. If we are working in independence of God, we really don't get anywhere. You know, our lifestyle have two ways. Each one of us here have a different, uh, I, do, I do that a lot in marital counseling. That's part of the financial discussion when we do marital counseling. The spending style. Some people are very like uh, good to save, organize their finance, and some others are just wildly spending. And the, it's important for them how they look, and that they have the uh, the brand names of clothes and shoes and everything. The shoes color must must match your hair, things you know, and everything, and your the color of your uh, eyeshadow and everything. So it, it, it's pretty expensive. It's pretty expensive. So. So we, we go through these things. So th think for a moment. There's a circle here. Okay, you have seen that picture. And inside these circles there are uh, my um, interests, the things that are important to me, I'm concerned with, the things that I like to do. And in the middle there is a throne. On the throne is self. So self we like to do and do. When we build our life independent, when our budget is independent from God's interest, when our lifestyle is not built on this, our, our, our spending style, or the way we use money and we look at money is going to be reflected by that. And we are going to spend. And we are going to, at the end, work hard, but spend so much money waste so much money that at the end of the month you have to work harder the next month to catch up on what you have spent and many times you will go on credit and then you will develop a lifestyle a spending style because this is what you are you are you are independent you satisfy self you you build for yourself so you will work hard you will earn a lot, you will be successful, but at the end, you have no more money, and you have no more peace, and you are stressful, and you are tired, and you have no time to enjoy your family. So who's, who's gaining in all of that? And, and the other style, you have a the, the same circle with the same interest, but on the throne is Jesus Christ. And everything goes through Jesus Christ. You live for him, you are careful, you pray about it, you plan, you want to, you, are, you, you have some interest of God among your own interests. Your lifestyle, your spending will not be the same, will not be the same, you know. I know that by experience, and I think, I think you will know that also. Because if Jesus Christ is part of your budget, is bar part of your, your work style. It will be part of your spending style as well. And at the end of the month, there will be a little bit more rest, a little bit more time for enjoyment, a little bit more time for uh, just living the life, not uh, being under the, the, the world pressure. And this is what we are uh, reading about here. And the last part of the, the verse is really, really good. Because it says, we learn for God gives rest to his loved ones. And there are two ways to translate this verse. And you can look at different Bible versions and you will see that it is true. The first one is, for he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. Okay, so that's one translation. He gives to his beloved even in his sleep. The other one is, for he gives his beloved sleep. Two different things, different translation, because maybe the, the Greek is not so clear, or the Hebrew is not so clear. For he gives to his beloved even in his sleep, or he gives his beloved sleep. Either way, you win. Either way, you win if God is, is in this part. You sleep, and God gives rest, or God gives gifts or blessing. When you sleep, you are not earning, you are not struggling, you are not striving, but God makes a way. 
God works behind the scene. God prepares opportunities. God allows something good to come, to develop. It may be directly to you. It may be in your pocket. It may be a raise. It may be in your children. It may be in, in different ways. And, and your health and the peace, because rest is part of your health, isn't it? Okay. I have a little um, slide here, ID. Uh, that says the blessing that come to us in sleep. And this is when God bless us with sleep. Renewed health and energy of body. That's good, just that. We need all that. Mental restfulness and refreshment. Sweeter thoughts and holier purpose. Oh, that's getting more deeper and uh, the purpose of our lives and the goals of our life. You sleep, you rest, sweeter thoughts, not so angry, not so stressful, not so sharp words with your family because you are rested and holier purpose. Your goal, you become more noble in the way that you will live. And providential gifts, like gifts out of the grace and the mercy of God comes to you. The rain falls, your harvest is good, the fruits of your fields is perfect. And someone says, often when we are doing nothing for ourselves, God is doing most. And it is true, and we need to learn the, 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 how the provisions and the miraculous ways of God works for our benefit. As we rest, you know, you come home, God blesses us more while we rest because we are His beloved and we rely on Him and we trust Him and we understand what we are talking about. He blesses us more than the others who are working themselves to the bone. Those, those who learn to trust in the Lord, you can lay aside the cares, the worry, the stress, and the needs that are waiting for you at the workplace. You, you, when when you, you understand that and it's part of your life and you train yourself to depend on God, when you walk home, you walk stress-free in your home. You come because the work is work, home is home, and you are building a better, a better home you know, in all this. And then when you come home, you can enjoy your family life and rest sweetly on your pillow because this is what it means to build a house unless the Lord builds the house the home the family what consists of a house of your house in first chronicle chapter 17 verse 7 and this is so deep and this is so wonderful it is a conversation between uh, David, who wanted to build a house for God because he really lived like this. He really trusted the Lord with his life. He was, he was rescued by the Lord so many, many countless times in his life. And God, he says, God, I want to build a house for you. And the prophet says, okay, do according to your heart. Then the prophet comes back and says, whoa, wait, wait. I have a message from God to you. And this is now that, see, see, unless God builds the house. Now God wants to say something. Are you going to build me a house? Let, let, let me speak first, God says. And this is the text that you have here. And this is an com incomplete text. You should read the old chapters and apply it to your life. And God knows where you're coming from. God knows where if you come from poor countries or poor conditions. He knows exactly who you are, your studies, everything. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people Israel. I took you as a poor little shepherd boy. I truly was so, such a little boy that when Samuel the prophet came to anoint Jesse's sons, he brought all of the other sons except one. This one was not even worthy of considering bringing to the prophet. If the prophet's going to anoint one of my sons to be a future king, it is certainly not to be this little boy in the field with the sheep. Even the father thought like this. Can you imagine having a father like that? That's what he thinks of you. You're good only for the sheep. That's all, you know. And says, do you have any other son? Uh, yes, but th this one is not really important. He's the little boy in the field with the sheep. He says, bring him here. I'm not going anywhere until he will be here. And when he saw him, he says, the Lord does not select according to what man select. 
but according to the heart. He is the one. He put the oil and anointed David who became. So David is, uh, God here is reminding David of that, about building a house. Who's building whose house? I took you there and I made you this. And then verse 10, I'm skipping many scriptures. I declare that the Lord will build you a house. Verse 23, and now, O Lord, now this is the, the heart response of David to this uh, amazing promises that God just gave him through the prophet. And now, O Lord, I am your servant. Do as you have promised concerning me and my family. What else can I do? You, you, you are the one. And for when you grant, and this, this is, I apply it to you this morning. For when you grant a blessing, O oh Lord, it is an eternal blessing. It works. It works. It works through generation. It works through people. It works through the, the, it works for you. You are included in that promise. Unless God builds your house, what else can you do? What else can you do? It is the Lord who blesses. Your family needs to be built by the Lord and for the Lord. And the security of your family is from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And then the, the other part is about the children. Verse 3 to 5. The fourth illustration is about building a family. Children are a gift or an heritage from the Lord. The Lord blesses your homes to your children. They bring joy. They bring life. They bring challenges. Your whole life is centered around them. They, you know, they cry. They get angry. You get angry. You know, the whole, the whole life of your home for years. If, you know, we are very stupid when we are young. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we think love is so wonderful. And love is wonderful, but it brings a lot of work <laughs> for many years because these little children, oh, you have to take care of them for a long time, for a long time. And God is there to bless you with that. It says children are in heritage of the Lord. And there are two ways to look at that. They are uh, a heritage that the Lord is passing to you and trusting to you, okay, like a gift, a reward, something. But it is also an heritage of the Lord. It belongs to Him. It's His. So you be careful because these children entrusted to you are His heritage. So what you are building in them is going to go back to Him. Or, or depriving God from the inheritance. That comes with a big, big contract attached to that. Maybe today many of you have your children in a distant land. And you are here because you see poverty there. You see lack of opportunity there. But be encouraged by God's promise. God is there. God is everywhere. God is with you. And you want God to be the builder of your family? He will. He will come up with amazing and these amazing ways. So what you have to do, don't let your sorrow, your worries imprison you. Bring them to Jesus and trust in the Lord. And the, the children here are also like arrows compared to arrows. Uh, we can see defense, but it also in arrows is something that doesn't exist by itself. Arrows is something that is going to uh, reach the target that you are aiming at. So your children are arrows into your hands. You are the one holding the bow. You are the one shooting. You are the one to direct the life into the will of God and all of this. And that is also very important for you to, to know that. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. You know, in today's generation, if you see people with more than three children, you will see, ah, so many children. It's so expensive, la. How can you make it, huh? You know? But according to God, it says a quiver full is very good. Is very good. Amen? So don't listen to always what the world says. Yes. Is it going to be expensive? Yes. Can God build a house? Yes. Can God can build a house. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a German proverb. Robert will like that. Many children 
make many prayers, and many prayers bring much blessing. Amen? Amen? Is it that good? Because children, they have one, one gift. Or, or, something comes in a package with a, with a child. When God drops that child into your care, it forces you on your knees for the rest of your life. You are so worried about, he brings so many trouble into your life that you are going constantly onto your knees. Oh Lord, oh Lord, save me, save me, pro provide, keep my child, bring him back. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, hallelujah. So that's why many children, many prayers, many prayers, much blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, for all of us, we know that if we are parents, that it is sometimes the one of the most difficult things to trust the Lord with our children. It is difficult. Because a child is an individual with an individual personality, an intelligence, a reasoning, a will, and an ability to make his own choice. When he's young, you tell him, go there, he goes there. Sit there, he sits there. You, you, you can't govern. And then suddenly it doesn't work anymore. And then you wonder, what's wrong? What's wrong? It doesn't work anymore. He's growing. He's growing. And sometimes he says, here, happy, blessing, you know. But sometimes there are more tears than the feeling of happiness and raising children. That's why we need to go back to the promises of God. We need to rest upon the promises of God because that's the only hope we have. And many troubles, we must acknowledge many troubles that we have. It's because we did it on our own. And many times we did not really pay attention to all of the baggage and the promises and the guidance that God would have had us to be paying more attention. So there are two slides that I want to show you in closing. Children are a blessing. Uh, f f uh, the effects of r seeing them as an heritage of the Lord. It, when, when the effects of the right training, is that the one? No, the other one, the one before that. Yeah, okay. If you see your children as an heritage of the Lord, these are some of the effects that will be here. Parents will trust in the Lord for their provision daily. Because this is a child that is an heritage, a gift of the Lord to me. So if God gives me this child, God will certainly do that. Okay? That's the effect that comes from understanding children are in the heritage of the Lord. God has blessed me with this child. God has given me this precious life. So God has a plan for that life and he's going to provide. God, uh, parents will regard them as entrusted from the Lord, like a holy, uh, something holy, something that is so holy in the Lord's sight and from whom they must render an account. This is an heritage to the Lord. Parents will train them in the fear of the Lord and they will often consult the Lord for them. Amen? That's what we do. We pray, we pray, we pray, we worry, we pray, we worry, we pray. Amen? Hallelujah. The next slide is the effects of the right training. You want to build with God. Here are some of the effects of the right training. Children becomes the parents' joy. And the, this, this is a, something of very important because you look at the uh, society have this thing. You look at the children and you judge the parent. <laughs> you look at the child if he is naughty or misbehaving and you have a little, well, you don't see it because we're polite. We don't, but well, we judge the, pa the parent's ability to transfer. And this is wrong. I'm not saying it's right, but this is something that we do. And sometimes we we see some good qualities and we say, wow, your child is so polite, you know? And it reflects on the, on the, the character of the parents. The support and solace of the parents' old age. Oh, when your children will be grown up, they have a university degree, they have money in their pocket, they can take care of you, okay? It's good. <laughs> The transmitters of their parents' values to another generation. And this is one of the role. Parents, this is so, so, so important. Think, if you have a son, think of him as he's going to get married. And he's going to be the husband of a woman just like you. 
Or do you want them to be spoiled, like a little brat, selfish, you know, like he doesn't clean his own bed, doesn't pick up his dirty socks, he's just, just not uh, able to clean the dishes, and then you will send him to get married to another lady. <laughs> wow, that's not fair for her. So the, the children must transmit your values, the values of God through you to them, to the other generation. And it goes on. Amen? Hallelujah. It's so wonderful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're so happy to be parents today. Uh, it's good. God builds and you build. Amen. Amen. What are you building with God? Amen. Let us stand this morning. Hallelujah.